Hey everyone, welcome to the Active Towns channel. My name is John Zimmerman and today is Friday, February 23rd. Uh, it is uh, early morning school time and I'm going to be uh, heading down towards Zilker Elementary and I wanted to highlight and profile some enhancements to the protected bike path as well as uh, some pedestrian crossings. So let's swing the camera around and check this out. We're gonna start off here on Melridge Place, and we've got a two-way cycle track that has been in place for quite some time. And as you'll see, we have a little bit of enhanced separation, and this is a really comfortable environment. And again, it's been in for several years now. Really makes a big difference too with the narrowing of the lanes, the travel lanes. Prior to installation, the motor vehicles would really be flying through here. Drivers just seemed invited to drive super fast. Now, however, as you'll see, uh, we've got some nice concrete installation here. Uh, we have a brand new pedestrian crossing up ahead, and you can see that we've got some nice robust concrete in there. Uh, yes, we still have the flex posts in this sort of buffer zone as well as some of the uh, concrete buttons. Again, it feels very, very comfortable in this environment now compared to what it was like before. And as you can see ahead with uh, the uh, father and kids sort of <laughs> one wheeling their way to school, which is so cool. Uh, but you also see just a, a high number of people using this two-way cycle path. It is super, super comfortable. And uh, I do want to point out though that this is a great example of how the city has been working to enhance and add some robustness to a facility that, you know, originally was just completely flex posts. And we'll see that at this next intersection up here. And uh, not this one, but uh, the next one. And you'll see that there's a, a little bit of a, an additional enhanced crossing there with some flex posts. But what I really want to focus in on is that if you look off to the right here at this intersection, you'll see a whole bunch of new concrete. This is all new and it used to be all just done in flex posts. But you can now see that we have a really, really robust and it, you know it's kind of necked down here just absolutely brilliant and so this is a great example that i wanted to show you of how uh yeah we can use flex posts just like we see there as sort of an interim step temporary step to you know really start working on changing driver behavior getting people to slow down and then when money is available come in and do the concrete work to make it you know more permanent and right up here we'll see an example of stuff that was done just with flex posts and then again when the money is available we can actually see that this bulb out can be you know formalized in concrete and that's exactly what will eventually happen here the reason why it didn't happen here yet compared to back there was back there they had some ada requirements that they needed to do and they wanted to make sure that they got that done ASAP. And so that got prioritized, you know, to be able to comply with the American Disabilities Act. Um, but yeah, you can just tell how, you know, vibrant and exciting this is every single morning, you know, getting here to Zilker Elementary because it's a very, very pleasant environment to be able to walk and bike to school. And again, this is really been a huge huge improvement over what this looked like say a decade or so ago uh, just really really nice to see this level of activity and yeah gives me hope that you know with cities around the globe when they are looking at redesigning the environment around schools and really anywhere and they're using temporary materials they you know it, Obviously, we'd like to have, you know, the best right up front, but at least this gives us the ability to get, you know, the space 
secured. Here's another example. We've got the uh, flex posts, you know, sort of getting the, the space reserved and then come back and, you know, get it in to concrete. And up here, we'll see some more uh, concrete work that was done. This is another intersection where we had some out of compliance sidewalks and transition zones. And I think I've got some video on this, but you can now see that this is completely done with a new sidewalk. We love to see it. And if I swing around here, get another view, you can get a nice view of that new crossing. So this is a new crossing that's going to get striped here real soon. And there's one more enhanced concrete work that I want to show you right up here at this next intersection. They are still working uh, up ahead, so uh, it's still construction zone further up, but this is all brand new concrete work and a brand new sidewalk. And uh, again, this is an area where they were out of compliance with the American Disabilities Act. And so we got this completed. And again, you see a nice robust bulb out here. And so nicely improved, really great to see. Okay, let's roll back towards the school and uh, wrap this up. It'll be a relatively short video today. But I really wanted to give you, you know, a, a little snapshot of some good news of going from temporary materials to interim materials in flex posts and buttons and making our way to more robust permanent infrastructure when you start to pour concrete and get that in. Uh, you know, for obvious reasons, it's very, very costly and difficult to redo if you get it wrong. And so, yeah. I love it. This is good stuff. And this is in our neighborhood, my neighborhood. So uh, I'm just absolutely delighted when, you know, my neighbors are able to get their kids to school in a safe uh, manner. So this is super, super cool. Are they are? You can also see that because of the traffic calming that is in place, the narrower lanes, the motor vehicle drivers are moving much, much slower than they probably would otherwise. Uh, yes, we do still have some parents dropping kids off at school. I'm not sure you know, what the percentage is of that. Uh, but we also see that we do have crossing guards here um, in the morning and uh, in the evening uh, when necessary to you know really make sure that it's safe for the kiddos to get across which is nice And this is a good example too of how having school zones where we don't even allow cars to be right get right to the school are so very 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 important uh, even with a, an area like this that has safer facilities uh, you can see the conflicts were in place and even the conflicts right here um, of just being able to decrease the number of motor vehicles that are uh, you know getting to the school area. There's absolutely no reason why we need to have just a plethora of cars cramming into an area where you've got kids trying to get to school, especially elementary school kids. few more people heading our way here. And we're returning to that very first enhanced crossing that we had talked about. Um, 
in particular I walk in this area a lot and so I love now having this uh, crosswalk here uh, before there really wasn't much you know to be able to help you get across the street and this is very very nice we see a nice concrete island here Hey, well, that's all I got for you here this morning. I just wanted to give you that little uh, snapshot of going from flex post to concrete. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And if you haven't done so already, I'd be honored to have you subscribe to the channel. Just click on that subscription button down below and ring the notifications bell. Well, until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me A Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.